Hey, welcome back to another RC Wars video. Today we are going to be showing you one simple tip to improving the overall life of your well pump. What we're going to do today is install a flow inducer or a flow sleeve as it's commonly known. And uh, what that does is help to ensure that the motor keeps cool. One thing to keep in mind, this isn't going to work in situations where you've got a four inch well or you've got four inch casing in your well. So make sure you check your well report to verify that this is actually going to work. But the great thing is, is if it doesn't fit because you're in a tight diameter well, that's no problem because the well itself acts as the flow sleeve. So the whole idea here is to keep the motor cooler so that it lasts longer. So let's get started. Okay, so what we're gonna do to get started here is this may look like your everyday schedule 40 PVC, but it is in fact a uh, SDR 35 pipe, so a low pressure uh, drain pipe. And the reason that we can't use schedule 40 is because the schedule 40 pipe is too uh, thick of a wall and the motor actually doesn't fit in there properly, uh, so it just won't work. So we use this slightly thinner walled material and then we're able to actually fit the motor in here and accomplish our goal. So the first thing that we've gotta do is we're gonna Going to make some lines here to go all the way around this uh, this sleeve. So what we're going to be doing is cutting along these lines. Now you don't actually have to draw these on here. I'm just doing this to show you uh, roughly how it's going to look. And then we're going to make some saw cuts so that we can then put a clamp on here, which is going to go around the pump and hold it in place. All right. So for this next part, make sure you got your safety glasses on. We're going to start making the cuts. Now again, you didn't have to make the marks, but they were just to give proof of concept. And there's really no particular depth on this, so just go with what works. I'm probably going about two and a half to three inches. So this one here, since it's one of my wider slots, I'm gonna even these two out. So they're about the same depth. And then we're gonna take this one, and we gotta cut it off of there. Beautiful. So now what this is, this is for the cable guard. So everything on the motor or the pump is gonna pass through here and then we'll put the, put the cable guard in this section and then the rest of this is gonna kinda of close in around the pump. Okay, so now what we've done is we slid the pump into the uh, piece of PVC here. We've got our cable guard lined up with the spot that we notched out and then I slid a five inch stainless steel hose clamp right over everything and started tightening that down. Now we're gonna continue tightening this down until we're nice and snug. And the thing to keep in mind uh, with these is there's no particular depth that the pump necessarily needs to be at. So it's kind of situational. You might've noticed that the piece of pipe started out, it was about four feet, in, well it was a four foot stick of uh, pipe. Now you don't necessarily, I mean I think this motor's probably, or this pump and motor's probably about two feet long, two and a half feet long. Um, we don't necessarily need all of that extra sleeve, so in most situations we would just hack that off and uh, discard that. But there are some benefits to having the longer sleeve. If you've got sediment in your well, uh, sand, things like that, it can actually help to allow that sand not to be drawn by the pump because it kind of has to work harder to get that up so the sand oftentimes will settle out with that longer sleeve. So it's kind of beneficial. But if you've got real clean water and you're just running the pump closer to the bottom, maybe you don't want that extra little bit on there. As long as it's covering the motor, then you're basically covered and you're accomplishing what this is set out to do. So we'll finish buttoning this up and move on. So the next thing that we're gonna have to do is put some set screws uh, in the PVC so that we can kind of make sure that the motor doesn't lean against any particular side of the flow sleeve because then you can get hot spots and you're actually doing the opposite of cooling. You're actually insulating that section of the motor and it won't be properly cooled. So the idea here is to take uh, and drill three holes in this all equally spaced uh, so that we can put some set screws in here. I'm just gonna use some uh, hex head um, 
or I'm sorry, Allen head uh, screws here that we're going to set in here. I'll probably have to trim these bolts down just a little bit uh, to make sure they're not sticking out too far, get hung up on stuff. But I do like these particularly because they have a really small head, so they're less likely to encounter any other problems. Um, so let's get going on that. Uh, one thing that you want to remember is you want to try to, let me just pull this out of here a little ways. So with these motors, um, they're kind of soft and squishy in the middle, uh, but reinforced and rigid at the top and the bottom. So we're kind of aiming for towards the bottom here where it's more reinforced. It's going to be really easy to dent right here because this is just the windings of the motor. And down here we've got a little bit more reinforcement. So what I want to do is I'm going to have the top of the sleeve be about right here, let's say. And then I'm going to measure to the spot on the motor that I want the screws to be, which is gonna be about that bottom inch. So I've got about, I'm gonna call it 19 and a half inches from my line is where I wanna tap my screws. So we'll reinsert this in, and actually just enough that it isn't gonna fall out. And then I'm gonna measure from here down 19 and a half inches and get started on my holes. So it doesn't have to be perfect. I've just got basically a very rudimentary triangle pattern here. And obviously I want to pre-drill these before the motor's in because I don't want to poke any holes in it. Okay. So now we'll insert our pump and motor the rest of the way here. So we'll go up to our line, which is right there. And then we'll go ahead and secure this in place a little better. Okay, so you might notice it's obvious we've got some gaps here. Um, that's perfectly normal. So what we're creating is a path of least resistance for the water to come up through the bottom. It's, it doesn't need to be a perfect seal here because we're still gonna have the majority of the water coming from the bottom, thus accomplishing the improved cooling. So let's get these screws set. We'll just get them all started real quick. Because I have no doubt that I'm gonna have to trim these. So you should be able to see that the motor is now not resting on any particular wall inside of here. The spacing doesn't need to be absolutely perfect, but now we know how much bolt we need, so we can go ahead and cut those to length. So here's what we got now that I've trimmed them down. They're all roughly the same length. All right, and that's about it. So once we get our screws set for the last time, just take one last look, check in there, make sure that your spacing is still true and that you don't have to make any final adjustments before installing this thing. And then you can just make the decision whether or not you want to keep this long or shorten it up a little bit uh, depending on your circumstances. So this has just been a quick tip to show you a good way to improve the overall life of your motor uh, and pump in the well because obviously it's expensive to replace and it's nice to be able to save when you can, especially when we're talking about maybe all of five to ten dollars worth of parts. So we'll catch you next time. Don't forget to like and subscribe. See you later.